Florida Sport Fishing TV presents Captain Mike's Rigging Station, powered by Mercury Marine. What's up, guys? I'm Captain Mike, and welcome back to my rigging station. If you're just joining us, we're talking about Pulley Ridge, and we've got a lot to cover. We're going to get right into it here. Pulley Ridge, absolutely incredible fishery. What are we talking about? You've got the state of Florida, comes down to the Florida Keys that literally head south and then veer off to the west. 60 miles or so west of Key West, you've got the world famous Dry Tortugas. Unbelievable fishery, right? Unbelievable. Well, even further than that, another 60 to 80 miles is Pulley Ridge. Protected area of high concern, deep water corals and algaes that are vital to our entire marine ecosystem. They're thriving there in the deep water and they're seeing less damage than corals in the shallower waters. So that's important for marine biologists and for fishermen alike. The area is incredible. You've got shallow water up on the bank in the 200 to 225 foot range, and then it really just plummets into the depths. You've got so many different ridges and ledges, and it's just an absolutely awesome deep drop fishery during the day, which is why most guys go out there. A variety of species, all sorts of tile fish and snappers and groupers, all sorts of stuff that you can deep drop for during the day. However, at night, after hours, the Pulley Ridge fishery takes a completely different turn. At nighttime, once that sun sets, the captain is going to maneuver the boat, regardless if it's one of these head boats that you're fishing. We fish aboard the Yankee Captains out of Key West. Or if you're on one of these go fast center consoles like our Sea Hunter, you know, guys are now running out there. They've got the power, they've got the speed, they've got the fuel capacity to make one day trips way out to Pulley Ridge and areas beyond, where years ago we just couldn't do that. But thanks to technology, we can do it today. Regardless, regardless if you're fishing on a head boat or if you're fishing on your own boat or on your buddy's boat, when you're out there fishing Pulley Ridge, you're all doing it the same way. And I want to get you dialed in on the tackle and the techniques. And look, understand, I'm not saying my way is the best way. If something's working for you, stick with it. Heck, call me and tell me about it. I just want to share with you how we do it, what has been proven over the years to be successful. We catch a lot of fish out there. Um, hopefully we're gonna catch a lot of fish in the coming days. We've got a trip that we're actually leaving on tonight. So this is about as fresh content as you can possibly get. Let's talk about that fishery at night. You're not going to be deep dropping. The deep drop fishing is over. Once that sun sets, those fish just don't bite at night. Okay, so you go up on the bank, that's what we call it, up on the shallower bank where you've got a wide variety of plate corals, a wide variety of this like lettuce-like algae, leafy algae. The bottom is just unbelievable and it's thriving with a wide variety of forage. And of course, if the forage is there, you can follow the food chain up, you know. We don't anchor. It's, it's, you can't anchor out there simply because it is protected. So you're gonna be drifting throughout the night. And there's a couple of different ways that you could effectively fish. And you're primarily targeting mutton snappers, red groupers, Okay, you might see some blackfin snapper, also called ham bone snappers. Uh, a black grouper may pop up, gag groupers, you know, just about anything in the grouper complex up in that shallower water. And of course, the deeper groupers are gonna be out there during the day when you're deep dropping. But at night, it's primarily gonna be, like I said, the red scamps. Let's not forget scamps. Boy, they're absolutely prized. Then in addition to that, you've got midwater predators, primarily the blackfin tuna. I'll tell you what, there are some nights out there in Pulley Ridge where it's just a wide open tuna bite, absolutely wide open. And of course, unlike other areas of the world and other fisheries where you're targeting yellow fins, blue fins, big eyes, you know, that could range into three, 400 pounds, that's not the case with the blackfins. These fish average 15 to 30 pounds. You know, you catch one over 30, I'll tell you what, that's a monster blackfin tuna, but they're out there. And some nights you just can't get a bait in the water, can't get a jig in the water or anything anywhere near the bottom without getting crushed by tunas. So a lot of different opportunity. And again, a lot of different ways to fish. 
but I want to share with you how we do it, why we do it the way we do it. And again, this is applicable regardless if you're on one of these headboats like the Yankee captains that we fish on annually um, with a group of guys, or if you're fishing on your own boat or your buddy's boat. So let's first talk about the bottom bait rod. That's what we'll call it. Chaos. Gear matters. And we got him, baby. We got him. Oh, that was what a slob! That's what I'm talking about, baby, right there! What a stud. That right there, baby, is deep dropping. Chaos. Gear matters. Shop online or visit our new superstore for everything fishing. Buying or selling anywhere in the Florida Keys, navigating the real estate waters is smooth sailing with Nate at the helm. He actually helped me find my home. Nate's also a family guy and has a clear understanding of coastal living. Nate also has firsthand experience in primary residences, second homes, investment properties, and even new construction. And when it comes to buying or selling in the Florida Keys, Nate is your guy. Buying or selling property anywhere in the Florida Keys, you have to work with someone you trust. I helped Mike, and I can help you. Here it is. So we boiled it down to a 30 to 60 pound class, eight foot conventional outfit, incredibly light, very, very comfortable, very easy to fish. It's matched to a Shimano Talica 12. It's a two speed reel. So we do have some extra torque, some extra winding power when hooked up to a bigger grouper and we need to get that fish up or even a big black fin tuna. And we need to get that fish up. That low gear is a real nice benefit. The reel is loaded with 40 pound diamond braid. It's the same line that we use on our deep drop outfits. So when we're deep dropping during the day with the power assist Shimano Beast Masters, they're loaded in 40 or maybe 50 pound diamond braid. And at night when we're fishing the bait rod manually, it's 40 pound braid. The end of the braid is connected to a top shot, 30 feet of 50 pound monofilament. Okay, and that monofilament provides some elasticity, a little bit more stealth. You don't want to go directly from the braid right to your hook. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's talk about the rig. You've got two options when it comes to rigging properly. And again, I've seen it all out there. We've tried it all out there. And unlike other fisheries, when you're primarily targeting a mutton snapper, when you need a 30 to 50 foot leader, that is not the case at Pulley Ridge. You could easily get away with a six to eight foot leader. Okay, and it's really even a little bit easier, a little bit more effective out there. The fish are not as pressured. They don't, they probably never seen a bait before in their lives. Okay, so there's just not a lot of pressure. And don't compare that mutton fishery out there at Pulley Ridge to mutton fishing off of Marathon here because it's just a different animal altogether. Nevertheless, your typical fish finder rig, and we're gonna show you how to rig it, but that's really gonna be your go-to. You're simply taking an eight ounce egg sinker, running your top shot, your monofilament top shot through the egg sinker. That's gonna be tied to a barrel swivel. And then off your barrel swivel, you're gonna have a liter of 50 pound, either 50 pound mono. We also bring 50 pound fluorocarbon just in the event the water is crystal clear and the fish are being really line shy. Rarely happens out there, but it doesn't hurt to have it. And that's gonna be six to eight feet, and that's gonna go to a 9-0 VMC 
inline tournament circle hook. Okay, you've got to fish the inline tournament circle hooks that are non-stainless steel. They're not, you know, they're not offset. And I like that 9-0 hook because I'll tell you what, out there at Pulley Ridge, like I said, not only do you have these muttons and the red groupers and all of that, at any time you don't know when that monster black grouper, uh, there's just so many prizes out there, huge Cubera snappers. You need a hook that can handle anything. And truthfully, anything that can't suck down that hook, I don't want to catch that anyway. That's your whole rig. You're going to fish a fresh bait, either a nice streamlined squid or maybe a nice fresh strip from a king mackerel or a bonita, a kingfish steak, half a goggle eye, a ballyhoo plug, flying fish, okay? Like I said, anything that you can get that is fresh. The fresher, the better. Does frozen bait work out there? Surprisingly, it does. Surprisingly well compared to a lot of other areas. But fresh is certainly gonna keep you tight. Now, what's the technique? Look, you're gonna be drifting. You're gonna drop that right to the bottom. Your thumb is on the spool. Feed it out, feed it out. You want the boat to drift away from your bait. Don't just drag it across the bottom. Remember, you've got that plate coral. You've got algaes. You've got a lot of different ways to get hung up in the bottom. You don't want that. And even though that coral is really brittle, it's like, uh, it's like concrete, it crumbles in your hand, okay? And it's often easy to get unhung if you get rocked up, but still, you don't want that. So I like to feed it out, get that bait out, feed it out away from the boat, get it away from everyone else's baits as well. You get a bite, remember, it's a circle hook. Let them go, let them smoke it, let them swim away, get that bait down its throat, lock it up real tight, and you should be hooked up, it's that simple. Now, there is another rig that's equally as effective, and it's very, very similar. If there's a little bit more current, maybe just a little bit of deeper water, rather than the fish finder rig where we run the line directly through the egg sinker, instead of doing that, we run our top shot through another barrel swivel before tying to a barrel swivel and finishing it off with our same leader and same hook. And that second barrel swivel, we'll put a 12 to 18 inch, you know, dropper loop coming off of that connected to a 12 ounce bank sinker. Same thing, hit the bottom and just slowly feed it out as the boat is drifting away from the bait. It's really that simple. And anything that's out there on the bottom is gonna eat those baits. And you're well equipped to handle anything with this particular outfit. I have to stress a couple of key points though. The bottom out there is really jagged. Like I said, it's very unforgiving, and that's why we bring you know, a lot of extra gear. I'm constantly checking my leader. If it's chafed or nicked or abraded, I'm gonna cut it and tie on a fresh one. Don't be that guy who makes that mistake. Don't let angler failure and tackle failure enter the equation. You don't know when the next bite is gonna be a fish of a lifetime. So, you know, in reality, look, you're paying a thousand bucks for a ticket to get on one of these boats or something like that. If you're running out on your own boat, you're spending a heck of a lot more than that just on fuel to get out there. So what's a few pennies of monofilament? What's a few pennies in a hook? Okay, that totally insignificant at the end of the day when it comes to expense, but vital to making sure that you capitalize on those trophy fish. Really, really important. For over 80 years, Furuno Innovations have helped more fishermen find and catch more fish than any other brand. And we're raising the bar again with Navnet TZ Touch 3's new PBG and Fish It Drifted Technologies. Build your own three-dimensional shaded relief charts to find trophy fish others have missed. Perform accurate drifts the first time, every time. Be the one everyone follows. When you're serious about fishing, lead the way and get serious with Furuno. The weather is beautiful and the fishing is great. Captain Pips has the largest rental boat fleet in the Keys, including new twin engine center consoles. Five locations, 150 boats ready to fish and cruise, and we deliver. Stay and play in a fully appointed cottage or catch the sunset off your very own Aqua Lodge. For the best hassle-free vacation the entire family will enjoy, no one does the Florida Keys better than Captain Pips. Mention Florida Sport Fishing and receive 10% off your entire stay. Seeing Zack attack with my own eyes, I'll never pull.
Hey guys, I'm Captain Mike and welcome to my rigging station. You've asked over and over, here's the answer. Dubro fishing, four different styles of rod and reel holder mounts for every application. Their ingenious lure and leader keeper system is perfect, either permanently mounted or portable. It keeps everything I need right at my fingertips so I could focus on staying hooked up. Listen, I count on Dubro products, so should you. Check out their full line of innovative gear at DubroFishing.com. Now another outfit that's an absolute must when you're out there at Pulley Ridge is a jigging outfit. Really, really important. Remember though, look, when I'm out there at Pulley Ridge and I'm fishing under the cover of darkness at night, I'm up on the bank. I'm in 200 feet, 220 feet. I'm not fishing the deep water where we fish during the day in 400 to 1,000 feet, where we have a different jigging outfit. And I encourage you, if you haven't yet, make sure you watch the first part of this where we talked about fishing Pulley Ridge during the day. And we discussed jigging, we discussed our jigging tackle and getting that jig to the bottom for the queen snappers and a lot of the other fish that live out there in that deep water. It requires a different setup than jigging up on the bank. This is shallow where my primary targets are really three species, mutton snapper, red grouper, and blackfin tuna. That's it. And all of those fish are typically going to be in the 10 to 30 pound range. So I could get away with a substantially lighter outfit that's more comfortable to fish and more effective to fish. This is our Chaos Slow Pitch Rod rated to 400 grams at six foot three, and it's matched to a Shimano Oshia Jigger 2000. It's the smaller brother to the Oshia Jigger 4000 that we were fishing in the deep water during the day. Has a massive cranking handle, plenty of line capacity. The reel is loaded in 30 pound diamond braid. And I want to remind you, our deep water jigging outfit, 20 pound diamond braid. Our shallower water jigging outfit, 30 pound. And while that may seem a little contradictory to you going, wait a minute, why are you fishing lighter line in deeper water for bigger fish? It's because of the resistance. We want to be able to get our jigs to the bottom and maintain a vertical presentation with the lightest jig possible, but still have plenty of strength and that 20 pound is perfect in those scenarios. Up on the bank at night, we can get away with 30 pound. We've got a little bit more freedom, right? We're not fishing water that's ultimately that deep. So the 30 pound is just a perfect setup. It's tied to 40 pound fluorocarbon as a top shot because once again, our braid has no elasticity. So we need to have that stretch. We need to have that stealth. So we go with the 40 pound fluorocarbon Make sure that you carry extra, because once again, anytime you get chafed up, make sure that you switch. Now, understand my go-to jig, guys. You know me, you've watched Florida Sport Fishing TV, you watch Captain Mike's Rigging Station, you know my go-to jig is the Mobster 250 from JigsRUs.com. That's what I've been fishing forever. Well, I recently came across another jig that they've just introduced. This is the prototype. I'm not even sure what they call this thing, the Bionic Killer or some crazy name like that, but I'll tell you what, it's an amazing jig with incredible shape, incredible action. I've used it, I've only had an opportunity to fish it once and I'm looking forward to fishing it a lot over the coming days. We're actually leaving tonight on a trip. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to fishing this, but the point I'm making is something in that 200, 250 gram range. It's got some orange glow. It's got flash. It's really all that you need. The assist hooks on the top and the bottom. And I can work this jig throughout the water column. I could fish it directly on the bottom for the mutton snappers, for the groupers. The blackfin tunas will pick it right off the bottom as well. Or I could work the same jig through the water column for the tunas that are higher up in the water column. And really with those two outfits, I'm absolutely ready and well prepared for anything that I'm gonna fish for there at night. And of course I wanna remind you, look, once that sun comes up, it's a different game altogether, right? And once you get back into that daytime gig, you're likely gonna start your day at Pulley Ridge trolling. Troll for Wahoo, get a couple of lines out there. If, even if you're on one of these head boats, like the Yankee captains that we fish, when they're moving from spot to spot, 
we're trolling. We've got some Nomad DTX minnows, some Nomad Mad Max back there, and we pick off Wahoo, that's the primary target, but we've also had bycatch consisting of blackfin tuna, yellowfin tuna, big king mackerel, dolphin, all of the pelagics live out there in the Gulf of Mexico, and you're fishing deep water right on the edge of an angling mecca known as Pulley Ridge. And then again, after that morning, that dawn troll, you'll likely go back to deep dropping. And that's what we talked about in the previous you know, show, all of the tackle and everything that you need to deep drop and do that deep water jigging. But if you're gonna stay there and if you're gonna fish overnight, you've gotta put all of that gear away, whip out the bait rod, whip out the jigging rod, and get ready for a nighttime full of action. Amongst cats, there are many lions, but only one rules the pride. Sea Hunter CTS. Carbon Kevlar construction. Optimum stability. Decisive performance. Sea Hunter boats. Factory direct sales, factory direct service. Number one in owner experience. Schedule a zero obligation sea trial and feel the difference. Lift and pump, just real. Just real. All right, come on, come on, somebody get in there, get in there. Crank, 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 crank. Got him, got him, got him. We got him. You got it, nice. You got him. Get him in the boat, ready? Oh. Not to your rod. Never jeopardize losing a rod, ever. Look. It's fishing, right? And I don't care what an awesome area this is that literally, you know, is home to dozens of different species. Depending on the water depth and depending on the exact area of Pulley Ridge that you're fishing, there are dozens of different species that you could encounter out there from the top of the water column to the bottom of the water column. And to be really prepared for everything, you might think you would need an entire tackle shop, an entire rigging station, but that simply isn't the case. You just need to have the right gear. And remember that this is evolving, just like every other fishery. You know, if you were to ask me years ago, what gear I would bring out to Pulley Ridge, it would be a completely different story than it is today. I've narrowed it down. Heck, we did a trip last year, filmed the show where I brought one rod, one rod, and did the entire trip, daytime and nighttime, on one outfit. So you could do that as well. But to, again, properly be prepared and to leave yourself open for both bait fishing and for jigging, you're gonna need a couple of different setups. And there's a lot of variation here. You get on these boats, there's 20 guys, 20 guys are fishing different, 20 different rods and reels, okay? I can almost guarantee you that. And that's okay, because everybody has their preference, everybody has their comfort level, everybody has, you know, their confidence in the tackle that they're using. I do want to point out, though, how important it is to not allow angler failure and tackle failure to enter the equation. You're spending a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort, and it's the small details that are going to make a big difference out there in Pulley Ridge, especially when you're fishing on a crowded headboat, elbow to elbow, with 20 other guys. Fortunately, these guys are pretty dialed in everybody's working together, everybody has the same goal in mind, and that's to have a great time and to be as successful as possible. If I can leave you with just a couple more tips that I wanted to share, both daytime and nighttime. You know, we talked about the tackle, we talked about the simplicity of it all, but pay very close attention to everything that's happening around you. Situational awareness is vital to your success out there. What baits seem to be getting bit the most? What rigs seem to be getting bit the most? You know, what sort of presentation? Regardless if you're deep dropping, I've seen guys that are just dragging their rigs across the bottom. I've seen other guys that pay out their line, other guys that hop their rig across the bottom. I mean, the variations are endless. It's the same with the jigging. Everybody has a different jigging rhythm. I don't care if you're not a professional slow pitch jig fisherman. That's okay. Still, get out there, drop a jig to the bottom move it just move it reel it crank it bounce it bring it to life you're gonna get bit 
and Pulley Ridge is a great arena, an absolutely fantastic place to hone your skills because there are so many targets. I like to say Pulley Ridge is a really target rich environment. And when it's bad, it's good. Even the worst trips are good. That's what I've learned after fishing out there for, oh gosh, more than a decade. And I can't tell you how many trips. Even when it's bad, it's good. The camaraderie, the, the life that you see, it's amazing. And when it's good, it's absolutely epic. When all of the conditions align and the fish are chewing, it could be, you know, a bucket list type of trip, as long as you're properly prepared. I've seen guys come out there with just absolutely the wrong gear. And look, if you don't have it, you're not getting it. That's the bottom line. If it's not on the boat, you're not getting it. So make sure that you are properly prepared. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Hit me up at any time. If you're not clear about anything, because I want you to be as successful of an angler as possible. That's what Captain Mike's Rigging Station is about. It's about proper preparation, proper execution, and really making you a safe and successful fisherman because nobody wants to come home a zero. You want to come home a hero.